Joining us now, a guy who has been the general manager of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for 10 years, the two-time defending is it two or three time defending? Derry, three that's time right. Defending. Rub it in, baby. Get it yeah. right, Florio. <laughs> three time defending NFC South champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jason Light. Jason, welcome back. How are you? Appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, always, man. This past year, I mean, this was the year that was supposed to be right. the regression. This yeah. was supposed to be the letdown. I, it has to be even more satisfying. You know, they say only one team's happy at the end of the year. You guys had to be happy. You get to the final eight and you give the Lions everything they can handle. Yeah, as you reflect on it, you're happy. At the time, it, you know, it takes a couple weeks after yeah. the last loss. Yeah. But right. um, as you reflect back on it, it was, yeah, just a, it was an awesome job. The, everybody involved in the organization just did a tremendous job. We had to take an unprecedented, you know, dead money hit and take a quarterback that really was out there and uh, nobody wanted him. Oh, well, he wanted to come. He wanted to come to the box. Right. So that was great. So. But what did you see that everybody else missed? Well, I'll be honest with you, um, Bruce, who's one of my best friends, and I still talk to, you know, often, he has always been a big Baker fan. Yeah, sure. And Bruce knows QBs. Oh, before he took the Bucks job, he said yeah. there was one job he would come back for. It was the yeah. Browns job when right. Baker Mayfield was the quarterback. So he's always been in my ear. He's been in Todd's ear. Todd actually really liked Baker when he went through the process in that, in that draft with the Jets. Um, and then they ended up with Darnold, but right. got to know Baker very well, and they kind of had a relationship whenever we played against him. So um, it was, you know, there was there was some there was some love for him internally, and I think that was a good spot for him to go to. So because of that, so people wanted him. Yeah, yeah, you you alluded to it a little bit, the the Brady thing, right? I mean, the dead cap money, all that that went along with. I mean, talk about. You know, we didn't expect anything. The, the post-Brady recalibration, right? You know, kind of allude on that and kind of have you had to deal with that in your organization. Well, it was a lot of players uh, that, you know, that were paying the price for, and I'd do it all again. Um, it was, it was yeah, great. Yeah, it was worth that, it. The bull parade is something else. Uh, but, um, you know, and it's, it's tough for a quarterback to step in Brady's shoes. Yeah, right. It's, it's you know, after he left, after winning the Super Bowl, it's, and Baker wasn't afraid to do it. We had a, we had a, but we still had a lot of good players though. We had Levante, we have Tristan, we have you Antoine know, Vita, Winfield, Antoine yeah, Winfield, sure. and so we still had Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. So it, he he circled us as a place. This is where I'm going to bet on myself, and I can revive my career. And he sure did. Did you guys feel like a little bit of a chip on your shoulder because everybody counts Canada out? Like, oh, the goat's not here, so the Bucks are going to fall off Earth. I think everybody did. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of what drove us a little bit this year so right. I'm hoping I'm hoping there's some naysayers I'm hoping I'm hoping to hear you guys say that we're going to stink again <laughs> I asked that you're going to stink again I asked this question no but you're not I asked this question knowing that candor is going to be difficult but I can't help but wonder organizationally and for you personally was there a sense after the 2022 season that it's just it's time to move past Tom Tom's leaving Tom's retiring but we're fine with that. It's time to turn the page. We, we got our Super Bowl, and it's time. I don't know if it's uh, with a player like Tom, if you ever say you're fine with it. I think you, you've come to the uh, – we knew that there was going to be a time and that this was going to end. So, And then when that time came, we're going to have to just look forward, not back. So, And that's what we did. Did you know when it became Baker's team off of that? Like, did you – was there a spot this year somewhere in the season? Early in the year, it was kind of, oh, we got off to a good start. Then it hit a little lull, right? Was there a moment? I think it happened early. So he and Kyle Trask were actually battling. It was a good battle during camp. Yeah. There were some times when Kyle was ahead of him, in my opinion. And then Baker, at the very end, separated himself with that last couple preseason games. What was right. it? Was there a moment that gave him the edge? He just, just – made more plays yeah is what it was right but you still didn't know if this was going to be his team and then it was the vikings game the first game of the year yeah. dropping the shoulder dropping the shoulder you know having the toughness being the tone setter which you don't want your quarterback to necessarily be but in our case it was him and the team just kind of rallied around him right right no no you got some big decisions to make right you got baker Right. Where does that stand? Baker, Mike Evans, Antoine Winfield Jr., if you, if you don't mind, just kind of discuss those a little bit without giving up too much of your... No, give up all you want. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't your, dissuade him. I'd give him that trust him. before we started me, for a reason. Not him. Well, we want them all back. Yeah. So, And we're talking to their representatives currently right now, and um, we'll continue to do that this week and next week, and hopefully, 
hopefully get them all back. So, do, do you say to Winfield's agent, you know, your guy wasn't a pro bowler, so that really <laughs> counts against him. <laughs> no, I don't think we can use that Until one. they answer back, wait, did you see this guy was a pro bowler? So uh, we've got to reevaluate that. There were a couple times this year um, in the locker room after the games. I mean, he had several good games, but I look at him and I go, I know, and he'd say, yeah, yeah. I know too. Yeah. You know, he knows he's a good player. But, 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 you know, Mike Evans is always, to me, one of these enigmas out there. I think guys who watch football on a regular basis, you know, nerds like me who are watching film, we appreciate him. But, like, in the national media, it feels like he's underrated, right? Now, I know he's getting up there in age here at this point, but, like, what would be your assessment of why he's a little flying under the radar as one of the great receivers of all time? You know, you can say the same thing a little bit. I feel like in Tampa, sometimes we're a little underappreciated. Yeah. Um, and that kind of goes along with the chip on our shoulder. Right. Um, you can say the same thing about Levante. You know, I think Levante's, if you look at his numbers, he's, he's up there Hall of Fame worthy numbers. Right. Especially if he plays another year. Yeah. And, um, but Mike, I don't know, it just goes under the radar. But he is, man, he's one of the best players in our franchise's history. He's unprecedented in a lot of ways. And, I mean, I just can't see life without Mike Evans. So I'm, I'm hoping, praying at night that yeah. we get something done. He's less diva-ish, it feels like, maybe, than yeah, top-tier receivers. It's unselfish. Right. Unselfish, selfless. Right. Um, there was a time when we were, you know, a few years ago, when we were trying to get Chris Godwin done, and he was like, hey, take money from me. I know. That's, uh, yes, that was so incredible. He's, uh, but now it's time to pay him his respect. He's a, he's a great player, and, and uh, um we're hoping to get all these guys back. Yeah. Is part of the objective try to get one or two done so you can hold the tag for whoever you don't get the deal done with? Well, I mean, shoot, ideally we'd like to not use the tag and um, get them all done. But, um, you know, it's just we're trying to chip away one at a time. Well, one at a time, but at the same time. Yeah. Well, you, you, you got, like, the young talent on the team, right, that you, you kind of talked about. Who, anybody surprise you that jumped out there, you know, as far as guys this year that kind of popped on the scene where you might not have been expecting this kind of performance this early on in their career? Well, I'll say one rookie that really did I Yaya. Gonna, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I think he's got a chance to be really special. So does our first-round pick, Kalaja. Right. But Yaya is just as big and strong and powerful and as athletic as, athletic as he is. Um, we got a steal in the third round. I mean, we got – Basically, we got lucky to get him there. He, so. he was like one of the guys last year that came here that was a freak show, and he turned it on. You were like, oh, my gosh, he's got muscles in his ears, right? Right. And it, one year of production really in college. Right. So it was uh, a little bit of a projection for you. A little bit of a projection, and um, he's got a chance to be really something. And did a lot yeah. without playing a lot this year, like under 50% of the snaps, I think, Didn't defensively. Didn't start until, you know, first seven games, um, so – uh, there's a lot to be excited about with him and Kalija. Yeah, so. Kalija undersized, right? How do you kind of stomach that? Like, you know, we know usually smaller D tackles other than Aaron Donald don't work, right? So what kind of finally put you over the edge with him to go, you know what, this is, let's do it. it it's time to draft this guy. Well, I think it's, we kind of hope that he can become pretty close to Aaron Donald. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. Good problem to have. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. So with Baker... Franchise tags available, obviously. You can only use one. Do you feel like he would not react well to the franchise tag and he feels like he deserves a reward for what he did last year? Do you have like a psychological, like because he's the center of the team, he's the quarterback, is that part of the, the thought process for you that using it could be problematic to the relationship in some way? Um, I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, where he would stand with that. Um, I do know this, that we and our owners have always been uh, conscious of, we just want to make sure that, we want to make sure that, of course, an organization wants to do the best deal that it can so we can sign as many players as they can and, and all that. But we also want to make sure that they're happy um, with their deal. So um, I think there's a little bit of a psychological element there with a the quarterback. Yeah, right. You want to make sure, you don't want the quarterback to think that you're. You don't want to be in the locker room being angry or like, right. ah, they're screwing me over. Right. Right. So I think that goes with a lot of players, a player like Mike Evans as well. Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, your fans should be very happy. Ten years on the job, a Super Bowl win at a time when you got the Patriots floating around and Patrick Mahomes floating around. You got that one Super Bowl win and you're moving in the right direction. We appreciate some of your time. We wish you all the best this week and beyond. Jason Light, Buccaneers GM. We'll be back Our with lady. Dolphins coach Mike McDaniel next here on PFT Live.
Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.